My friends, I think it's about time I built some British armor. In fact, I've actually never posted a video on any British tank or aircraft on this channel at all. I only own a couple of Mark 1 land ships in my collection, and those were before I created this YouTube channel, which is now almost two years old. And man, does time fly when you're having fun creating models. But nonetheless, this kit from Airfrix is excellent from my experience, and I definitely recommend this model to any beginner who's interested in building tanks. It comes with two decal marking options, as well as a colorized painting guide, which is quite uncommon on some of these older Airfix kits, if you know what I mean. But the kit also appears to be a new and improved set. Its quality shows how much better this is compared to their 176 Sherman, which I believe came out back in 1968. I chose Belvedere for that nice yellow in contrast with the black spots for the camo, and personally, I think it suits the Sherman nicely for my taste. But as you just saw, the second option being Veleki Luki and two big red number 12 unit markings. I also uh, want to apologize for butchering Veleki Luki if I did, which you no, know, I most likely did, but we'll just go with it for now. An interesting note that the Veleki Luki Firefly was the one that I believe killed Michael Wittmann's tiger. You know, with his unit markings being 007. And if memory serves me right, the crew of the Firefly named it Vileke Luki in honor of the battle that took place. Uh, I believe a town somewhere in Russia. For the rest of the kit, its instruction manual is straightforward and simple. I love how it has highlighted parts, before and after steps showing you how it should look, crystal clear pictures that are 3D, which are helpful for using the right parts and figuring out which ones need to be attached to which. For me, this kit gets a big thumbs up, and I just love how it's overall represented. Now for the tracks, I decided to not go with the more simplified, non-cleated ones, because as you can see here, I think the cleated tracks look much better, in my opinion, especially when they become more polished and have a nice steel effect for when they're finished. But uh, really, it's just all down to you if you want to build it even faster with the pre-made assembled tracks. And really, the only issue I had with this kit was assembling parts of the tracks on the front axle wheel and the rear idler wheel, which really may have been down to my part an issue, as you can see here. Uh, and also, I think this one kind of confused me a little bit. It said that you needed to attach that wheel, but I think for some reason they had it backwards. I'm not sure if anyone else has had this issue before, but please let me know if you have or uh, if I'm just an idiot. And for the top layer and inner sides of the hull, I painted on black to act as a deep shadow just in case if I miss any uh, during the painting process. And also keep note that the underside of the hull does not have any plastic, so really it will mostly be covered up by the tracks. Now listen to the satisfying sound of plastic snapping together. Another builder's note, I recommend that you, do, you don't put this wooden plank board early on for when you're not assembling the hole just yet. I recommend you save it at the end as but from before. I had to take it off as I made a mistake that it stood too far apart and there was a big gap in between the front of the hole and this wooden board. So make sure you save it for the end and it is properly placed. And as well as for the stowage too. Now we can finally move on to priming the model, and well this time, if you're already familiar with my videos, I like priming them in the AK Interactive 3rd generation black primer, which is nice and durable when it's applied in multiple layers. I think here it's at least in 2 or 3 layers, especially when this model is so small, and black is such a high po coverage and powerful paint, which will co most likely cover even on one coat in some cases but here you just want to make sure it's nice and thin and translucent. Then I wanted to experiment with some pre-shading effects. Here it really wasn't that great of an attempt as you know again I was just testing it and seeing what would work and what wouldn't but I'll definitely give this another go for another model in another video of course. If you're curious I'm just using some chocolate brown you can even really use some red brown if you want to as really it doesn't entirely matter in this case, especially when I'll be adding highlights 
uh, later on during the final stages. Here you can see that I'm also using some left color white just as a nice highlight effect. I mix flat green and olive drab into equal parts. With a rough ratio of 2 drops olive drab and 1 drop flat green, you'll see the end result here which was built up in about 3 to 4 layers. Some areas look better than others, but I don't think it looks too bad if a more realistic model is what your heart desires. Then for the highlights, I used some Vallejo flat yellow and also some basic skin tone to push the contrast up a bit and to create our own way of color modulation just by using the brush. Also, if you're curious about the technique I'm using, as you see me work my way on the model with this uh, frizzled out or frayed out brush, I'm using an overbrushing technique, I'm sort of mixed in between a dry brushing technique. You know, you still want to thin down the paint and then wipe off excess on a paper towel, or maybe even a non-absorbent surface, just to give you relatively smooth highlights. If you make any mistakes, you can just thin down the original base coat and add it on as a nice little glaze slash filter. And then we use some black gray as it works perfectly as a off black color. If we just use black straight from the bottle, it would just be a little bit too off scale and way too dark. And yes, maybe you may add on some you know, dust layers and weather ink, which may brighten up a bit. But for me, in my taste, I think it'll work well as in the scale factor, especially when this model is you know small and in 172nd scale. And then you can mix black gray with German camouflage black brown and paint it on for the tracks, uh, the rubber tires and wheels, and anything else that may be metal. Or actually even later on for the metal parts like the cleaning tubes and it looks like the, the gun holder that keeps the gun in place on the rear of the engine deck, you can paint those in a neutral gray, which you'll see here coming up. Oh, and I also mixed together some Iraqi sand and chocolate brown from AK into a relative equal mix parts. You know, maybe one being more overpowering than the other. The decals from this kit were absolutely excellent. I didn't have any issues with them when I was applying them on or trying to I uh, thinned them off their decal sheet with warm water and you can see here just simply applying them on and removing the excess moisture from it and using a cotton bud to help flatten it. And really you can just use some microsol in about 3-4 to four layers. This stuff works like magic and honestly the white star on the side of the turret was practically sunken into the paint which was very impressive and I was very happy with how it turned out. The only thing you have to do is you can see here under certain angles of light you have to knock it down knock down the sheen with a matte medium color or really just matte medium which is just paint without any color in it you know the pigment that provides this color and you can see here it practically goes away and making it very very hard to see you can even use matte mod podge which i also found to be very effective maybe even slightly more matte compared to Vejo's matte medium. Or I guess they also have ultra matte polyurethane uh, acrylic, which I have never tried before, but maybe that also works too, along with many other brands as well. Here, I'm just using my acrylic soap wash made from Vejo paints, 
made with flat black and flat brown. If you're curious on more full detail on how I created these two, or my acrylic soap wash here, you can go check out my last previous video on how to create your own acrylic soap wash. And now for the chipping. The chipping, I'm just using some Araki sand and basic skin tone, or really you can even use some white just for that nice light scratch effect. And it eventually we'll move on to a more deeper uh, 3D scratch effect, which of course you'll see later on. But really you wanna make sure you have a little amount of paint on your brush as well as on your sponge. Otherwise it'll look unnatural and artificial when you're just applying it on the sponges and it really won't look too great. And it'll look a little bit more unrealistic unless you're doing a tank that's completely abandoned. And now for some dark rust as our deeper scratches effect. And you may be thinking, why am I using a dark rust paint? Well, don't let the name of the color of the paint fool you. It's only a name of it. Using Araki sand, for example, as wood texture, or as painting wooden items on your model. You can use black brown, chocolate brown, uh, maybe even more rusty effect if you desire. It's your model and you can do whatever you want with it. And I just thought, when it has a black pattern along the sides of if I were to use maybe a black brown color, it wouldn't pop out as much if I were using a more brown color. For the mud effects, I use some AK Splatter Effects Stirred Earth. You may have also seen me use this product on my Tiger 2 video. It has a nice texture that also holds little chunks that will allow me to create volume. You see that I'm using a sponge to stipple on the effect to the rear mud flaps, as well as a toothpick and brush is also used to fling mud on the inner sides of its hole, which you will see later on. Luckily, the product is acrylic and can be diluted with just water. And I'm sure you notice here that I'm just stippling on the mud effects randomly along the tracks and really I'm just using my finger to scrape off and keep those track cleats nice and polished for when we're adding on the metallic effect. And now for the main earth effects. Here I'm just using some chocolate brown for chocolate color from AK and some khaki which khaki, once you thin down, looks like a nice dry mud effect and could also look like dust, which you see me build up here. Oh, and I also use some Tamiya flat base to get that nice ultra matte effect for when I'm mixing it in with khaki, it'll look like nice dry mud. Here I'm just doing some dry dirt accumulations and maybe some dust deposits on corners and crevices to where I think the crew would access the most and have of course the most wear and tear. Especially we have to think about where uh, streaks of rain would rain down the tank and run off the dry earth dust and anything else that you can think of that will accumulate with a lot of grime. And here I'm simply using a vertical streaking effect. This could also be a lot easier if you just used a flat brush, 
which I really should have done here. But in the end, it still ended up working out for me. And now for the metallic effects, we're going to use some Vejo metal color, airbrush colors, which really also works great for brush painting as well. The dark steel effect, which I think works perfectly for that nice polish, cleats, and along the rear uh, idler wheel and the front sprocket wheel, which is perfect for this effect. And don't forget the teeth as well. We want them nice and shiny and clean. For the final stages of detailing, we're using some Molotov Liquid Chrome. I usually don't have any issues with this product, but I mistakenly forgot to shake it. As you can see on first contact, I couldn't get the paint out. Especially when it touched the model, it didn't even work uh, at first. In the end, I think the headlights still came out pretty decently. And finally, a fun new little detail product, some birch leaves from Ammo by Mig. And even though if they've recommended for 148, 35th, and 32nd, I still think they work just fine for 172nd scale. And I really hope you all enjoyed watching me put this small firefly together. If you've made it to the end, then you're an absolute legend. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time.